Hello everyone, welcome to the Hillbilly Farmers. Today we're going to discuss this generator. It's a 9,500 watt running generator and we'd like to show you what we were able to accomplish with this generator in an emergency situation. Here's my chicken scratch paperwork here if you can actually see any of that. Long to short here we were able to run a full amp load of 14,114 watts. Now, of course, this generator cannot handle that, as you can see, it's a 12,500 peak watch generator. The way we were able to accomplish running multiple refrigerator freezers, air conditioning units, refrigerators, microwaves, so on and so forth, is that we started things off in a particular fashion. The first thing we did, we have a three ton heat pump that we were using air conditioning with. We fired that up first, let everything get nice and settled so that the amperage load came down on that. Then we brought on one window air conditioner at a time, one ton each. Let each one settle down before we turned on the extra one. The big kicker here is on the air conditioning units, we turned the thermostat way down as far as it would go. That way they stay running continuously. That way you don't have that startup load, the full load amps continuously turning on and off and on and off. So it really smooths everything out and it brings your wattage load down a lot if you can keep them running continuously. So let's go down the list here. We were able to operate five tons of air conditioning, three refrigerator freezer combos, two straight up refrigerators, one of which was a two door refrigerator and the other was a three door re refrigerator, a microwave of 1,250 watts, freezer LED lights that were down in the basement running at about two amps each as far as those go. And we were able to add a little bit more load on as well. We were able to add the small eye on our electric stove as well. That was very interesting. However, when we tried to turn another eye on, the generator started to bog down. So we just turned that off and it came right back up to life. So we ran that for a while. This is actually our initial test is what we did before we needed it. Oddly enough, three days later after running the test, we actually had to run this generator for real. It was a very hot day. So I was using this generator for other things during that time frame. And this was a failure, and I want to explain this to you. It was pretty interesting. I thought I had everything turned off to be able to start up our three-ton heat pump for the house. However, I had one refrigerator-freezer combo in the basement that was on, and I believe it was in its defrost cycle. Also had the LED lights in the basement going, and a freezer that runs about two amps. We fired up our heat pump. It has two-stage cooling. It went into stage one. Everything was fine. As soon as it hit stage two, the generator bogged down so much that the starter actually started to activate on it. It sat there for about, it felt like three seconds, but of course I'm, I'm sitting there with my mouth dropped like, oh no, what is happening? And it did actually kick the main breaker here. Went around, inspected everything, and nothing was damaged whatsoever. We turned off every single breaker except for the breaker to the heat pump. The generator is still running at this point in time, so all we did is turn the main breaker back on, and turned on the breaker to the heat pump. Went ahead and let it go through all of its uh, first stage and second stage cooling and everything was fine. I think what happened that couldn't handle that extra load is because everything in here was heat soaked. The engine was heat soaked and also the motor was heat soaked. But after that little folly we had, we were, a we were able to bring everything back online and didn't have any issues with it. The big major point to this is two things. First of all, when you're running that much of a load on it, you're gonna be operating at about one gallon per hour on this generator. The generator holds about six and a half gallons. So after six hours of runtime, we were just about bone dry. I know they advertise this one to be able to run 10 hours, I think, at half load. Second point that I wanted to bring up is that we are not saying this is something you should do by any means. We're not electrical engineers, we're not electrical designers, we're not electricians. This is just what we had to do in an emergency situation. I really just wanted to let you know what was going on. Maybe it can help you out if you're trying to pick a generator out for yourself. So far, we've been really happy with the generator. We only have about 13 hours on it at this point in time, and it's been pretty good. The electric starts nice. You don't have to worry about pulling it. Uh, we, got, we started about every three months to get some fuel, ran through the carburetor to freshen it up, but we really enjoyed it. We primarily bought it because of this 50 amp plug right here. Uh, we're using eight gauge SO cord to hook up to the house and it's been fine. The cord just lays right through here. It hasn't been an issue. If you're using solid wire instead of stranded wire, 
you might have an issue with trying to get your plug in there with the wheel that's in the way. But with the SO cord, we've had no issues whatsoever. Well, guys, we hope this helped you out a little bit, and hopefully it can help you to uh, pick out a generator that can do what you need during an emergency situation like we've had to deal with ourselves. Well, thank you all so much for watching. We appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if, you if you're enjoying the content, and we'll talk to you later.